Hey everybody, Anthony here, FSU Off-Road. Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to try to change things up a little bit. We've done a lot on the Jeep so far, chassis rather, with our 4800 build, and we've done a lot of big projects. The only downside to those big projects is they take a lot of time for me to record, to me to edit, to get them uploaded to you guys. So what I wanna to do today is something a little bit smaller. Yes, it's gonna take me some time, but it's kinda of gonna, go with the flow of things and specifically working back here in this area as you know we're running the jazz fuel cell the 32 gallon jeep speed is what it's classified as with our tmr custom chassis um, fuel cell mount kind of built for this but it, you can use it for this specific specific fuel cell in any application that you're going with and we have a filler neck here and I want to run it to the side um, that way we can feel to the outside of the chassis which is part of ultra four rules but in order to get that where I want it placed I need to figure out where our radiator is going to fit so today I'm going to bring you a quick video on radiator mounts um, getting it kind of fabbed up located where we're going to put it on the chassis get our filler neck installed and um, yeah that'll kind of ease into these possibly shorter videos um, that way it can upload more often for you guys and not take so long with editing and videoing and all that thing so we'll see how this goes it's a trial and error basis and see if we can't get this channel to grow a little bit maybe wondering you know with a rear mounted radiator what we're going to use we're going to we reached out to griffin radiators down in south carolina not too far from here and um got one of their full systems uh, running 16 inch fans that should be plenty enough to cool this motor um, we're not going to be pushing eight nine hundred horses anything like that and so we want the biggest radiator that we could possibly fit back here it's roughly 34 inches by 19 inches uh, with the two 16 inch fans and um, that should be plenty enough to get this thing cooled so let's get this unpackaged show you what we're working with this is the Griffin Combo Unit CU00008LS. It's a dual pass radiator with two spall, uh, 16 inch spall fans and also has the shroud into it, um, built into it as well. And then it comes with two wiring harnesses for the fans themselves. But before I can get to mounting this up there, I need to install this Jazz 45 degree neck on the fuel cell kind of get it angled out that way i can make sure that we're not going to have any clearances of the overall radiator um, in its entirety okay to save the fins on here because uh, you want it to not be crinkled up or anything that way you can get the maximum amount of cooling i'm going to cut out a piece of cardboard to protect it all and uh at least these little fins here so we'll cut us a piece out I'll tape it on there um, that way it'll kind of protect these and then we'll get it mocked up in the in the chassis and uh, hopefully everything's gonna fit I feel nauseous believe me never had a lot of sh come easy had to work hard struggle just to be me had to rise up just so they could see me as you can see we had to rotate the fill nozzle again so what we'll do is we'll just have this come up and over and you know attach it up here somewhere and probably have some kind of awkward bend but that'll be fine um, i kind of just got it sitting on these lower mounts it'll need to come up about a half an inch more but this will give me enough room uh, up top for um our light bar and stuff like that and we got because you gotta think about that thing those things like that and then we can build um lower mounts off of the the v bars there that come down uh, we can build brackets off there so um, there's multiple different ways to mount radiators. Uh, some people use like uh, pinch style um, mounts. Some people, you know, from top to bottom or side to side, depending. Um, some people just use like flat bottoms and uh, caps. Um, most of the time you don't hard mount a radiator just because of vibrations and stuff, especially in off-road, we're not going to hard mount it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build some custom brackets that come from our V, um, well, the W bars behind our heads that come out the bottom and it's going to sit on a rubber pad and we'll run that pretty much straight across 
and uh, we'll basically build lips on it. That way it can't move back and forth. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan, your own hands can land your own brand. And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability. They want the credibility, convincingly unwilling to- Well, when you don't have a bender that'll bend eighth inch material, you cut relief cuts. Now that I have the templates laid out the way I wanted them, I went ahead and cut relief cuts out. Went ahead and ground them all down, cleaned them all up, put the relief cuts in there. Now I'll be able to, to bend them. I swear to God they all let me down. I always fought just to wear the crown. I'm off at these fucking clowns. Hoover all taught they deserve it now. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. You can see how um, they just bent perfectly for what we're needing. Um, and like I said, I was gonna connect them in the V's and by having this little anchor point, it gives me a little bit extra more support um, to hold it in there. Um, with the angling coming up, um, with the angle coming up, it allows the fuel cell, once we need to take it out, to slide out and up out of the way. Um, so that won't be a problem. There's multiple ways to disconnect the fuel cell. So we won't have any issues getting that out of here. Um, like I said, we're gonna mount these roughly in these particular areas here. I might have to do some grinding and get some final measurements and things like that. Starting day two on these rear radiator mounts and getting this radiator installed. Nothing more motivating than actually listening to the race. Uh, down in Rush, Kentucky, we raced it last year. It was a muddy mess. This year it's a little bit dry. Still muddy, um, but they're finished up the Everman Challenge race and I cannot wait to get out there to get this thing out there with the rest of those 4,800 cars and see what we can do. But today, we're gonna finish getting these tack welded in place, welded up the little back pieces there, and then we'll start working on the front. All right, so for the rear rounded radiator, I went to the hardware store and got some rubber um, matting, basically for gaskets, but regardless, this is gonna keep it from metal on metal contact. Um, I went ahead and tacked our radiator mounts in place, got them all squared up, nice and level now, um, and then basically your radiator sits in here and this rubber creates a barrier that way it's not metal on metal and you don't puncture or rupture the the radiator so we're going to get the radiator sat in here and then we can contemplate how we're going to build our upper our upper mount and how we're going to secure it to the chassis as I'm just telling you to fight for your dreams but it's not what it seems man it's hard to be seen when everybody wants to be king Yeah, they all wanna ring Yeah, we all wanna be free So show me what you got, what you bring How you fight in the ring How you take a f***ing swing Do you got heart? Are you mean? Got some scars, got some needs Are you willing to go bleed? Basically, the very similar amounts of what we did for the lowers, for the uppers Except for these, we're just gonna have a clamp to push the radiator forward Clamp it in place, hold it nice and secure, tight the rubber will keep everything nice and secure um, as well as the vibrations and everything without rubbing the punctures in the aluminum and we should be good to go. Just wanted to show you what we built as far as the tabs that they'll bolt to from our brackets earlier. So I built like a little square piece here. It's just a little plate and it's rounded. That way it kind of contours to the chassis and what we'll do is we'll bolt two bolts down and then um, the piece that we built earlier will sit on top here kind of hold the, the radiator in on both sides. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. I swear to God they don't let me die. I always thought just to win the crown. Now before I do a final weld on the back side here, I'm checking to I'm checking to see the fitment on the actual bracket. So we have the two piece bracket, see how it bolts there. Uh, and it'll pinch it down, keeping it nice and secure on the bottom ones down here, um, as well as whenever we put the new one on there, um, or as we tighten the bolts down, 
um, it'll pinch the rubber grommets in here from it uh, from it moving back and forth like that. But overall, it's nice and secure. This side looks really good. Overall, I have an eighth inch gap all the way around, um, so it's perfect on this side. However, I gotta do a little bit of work on this side for the angling up top here. So I'll just grind those down and then I'll get this all welded up and then uh, show you the final product. Okay, I got you up here and I just wanted to show you how this is gonna work. I went ahead and got this one side on there and as you tighten these bolts down, it kind of clamps it down. Uh, there's still a little gap there, but like I said, there's it's filled with rubber. Um, so what you do is you get your rubber piece, you'll attach um, your bracket uh, with your, well, the part that's on your chassis with your secondary bracket. Now these bolts here are obviously just for mock-up purposes, but you can see as I tighten it down, it kind of clamps it down on the radiator, which is what we're shooting for. Um, so as we continue to tighten these down, like so, the radiator is nice and secure and it's not going nowhere. And there'll be four bolts that hold the whole radiator in place. Also, for the fuel neck filler assembly, I was able to find a 45 that'll come out up here from our, our filler neck. And we'll basically do a 45 from there, and then at that 45 angle, uh, this tube will just bend around the fan uh, as it pulls air out. So we kind of figured that out, killing two birds with one stone. Well, I hope you guys like this video, uh, a little bit shorter. Uh, it's kind of what I want to incorporate moving forward since we're not doing such big projects. Um, so we can kind of get a little bit more content out for you guys and it's not so drawn out uh, from week to week. But uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this build. Uh, I hope that you guys are liking what you see. Uh, I hope that you guys like the radiator install with our custom rear mounts. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a professional by no means, but this will get you in the right direction. If you're looking for something like that, um, if you want to be notified for future videos, hit the notification bell. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit that like button, share it with your friends, your family members, people that might be interested in racing. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!